Hello, this is going to be a longer bubble video on questionnaires in bubble. I'm going to create a true false or an A, B, C or D questionnaire using kind of the same system, which works for both. And then going to show you how to record the answers so we can see kind of all our past answers or all of one user's past answers. And of course, also the admin necessary to create questions. So you can have like your own page where you add questions to the database that all your users can answer you know, for quiz apps, or maybe you also have some questions to ask every user just after they sign up or something. Cool, let's start with a database. We're gonna go over to data types and create a new data type called new question. And a data type called new answer because there will be lots of questions and answers in our app. And each answer has a text. So if the question is, which of the following is mammal? then the answers could be, I don't know, shark, fish, and whale. So these are all texts, right? And then each answer should be linked to a root question, like which of the following is a mammal? So here we can select new question because we created a data type called new question. Okay, and then each question also has a text, which is which of the following is a mammal, for example. Then each question has a list of answers. So which of the following is a mammal and the three answers. So these are three different rows in the answer tables it will be linked to are shark, fish, and whale. As an example, so here we select new answers and it's a list. Okay, we also need to know what is the right answer for every question so we can mark it. And this is a text. And then, in this case, actually, it, it can be a text, but let's also make it type answer. This gives us actually more flexibility. Both of it, both would work. Okay, and then we have list of users who answered correctly. So we want to record who answered a question and whether it was right or wrong. So this is a list of users who answered one question correctly. And then each question might also have a list of users who answered incorrectly. Again, a list of users. Okay, this looks pretty good now. So now we can get started. Actually, one of the best ways to kind of learn about this, I thought, would be to start with admin to create the questions. You get a good overview of what has to be done. We're going to do this at the way bottom. Okay, and we're going to create an input called question text and a button called question. And then here we have a repeating group. We can actually right click it to group it inside a group. So the repeating group is now inside a group. And this group is type new question, but empty. And here we want to show the answers. So we remember that each question is linked to a list of answers. Therefore here we have a repeating group showing the new answers and which new answers of that one question we have selected. Parent groups, new questions, list of answers. And so in this repeating group, we can then show the answers, show you the text. And then this is a group where we just have one question, parent groups, new questions, text. So the workflow we want to do here is we're going to create a new question, and then we want to display this question so we can add answers to it. To do that, we're going to just copy this input change the input to input answer and call the button new answer. Okay, so the first part is we're gonna create a new question. So just create a new row in the questions table with the text of the input questions value. And then we're going to reset the input so it's empty so we can add a new question and then we want to display that question 
in, in the group down here. So when we create it, we want to display it so we can add answers to that question. So select group new question and result of step one. So the question we just created is displayed in the group below. And then we do the next part, which is the new answer. So we just did this, clicking the new question, now clicking the new answer button. Again, we're going to create a new row, but this time in the answer table. And the text will be of the imports value. And the root question will be the parent groups question, because this input is in a group type question. And when we create a new question, it makes that question the question of this group. So that answer is linked to that question then. We also want to link it the other way around. So this means here we link the answer with the question. Here we want to link the question with the answer. So we do a li list of answers and result of step one. So we create an answer and take that answer and add it to the list of answers of that one question. Again, we can reset the inputs. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, it should work. Let's have a quick test. Which of the, okay, one thing we went, forgot is uh, we might want to count the questions or have some sort of order for the questions. So we're gonna create a new field underneath question called order number, type number. And so we want to always start with question one and then the next one is question two, three, etc. To do this, we search all the questions in the entire database. So if it finds 100, it would count 100, search for new questions count, and then add one. So if it finds three questions, the next question will be question four. If it finds zero questions, the first question will be question one. Okay, let's... Which of the following is a mammal? Okay, and what we're missing actually is which one is the right answer. So we want to have a button here where we can choose which one is the right answer. So when we click is right, we want to make sure that the question we've got here that the right answer is the one we click so whichever answer we clicked will be the, saved as the right one and then we want to maybe show this to the user and uh, to the admin user so therefore we do when Group new questions, new questions. So when the right answer is that one, then we want to just make it obvious to the user by making it maybe green. And otherwise, maybe we want to just make it gray or something. Okay. And then the one shortcoming at the moment is when I refresh the page, currently this will be empty. Why? Because this group starts off with no questions. So we're going to change this when this group's new questions is empty. We're going to show the first question in the database we find. Okay. Because only because we did that, we can now edit it here. And we see it's not quite working as expected. Uh, 
this over here. Because whenever we click new question to display a new data, so the question we just created, it's going to overwrite what's already in the group. Okay. What's happening here? Okay, no, it's uh, working all along. I didn't notice. So we see here which of the following is a mammal, shark, fish, and saber tiger. And maybe the actually right answer like whale. And we click is right. So whale will be the right answer. Then we have another one who is a tennis player. I'm just gonna add some questions. Then we have Rafael Nadal, whom I think you may have heard of, Tiger Woods. They say he's also kind of famous, and Lewis Hamilton, very good backhand, I'm kidding. And here it's right, and then which tennis event is on right now? Of course, not when you're watching, but when I'm creating this one. And it's the French Open, the Spanish Open, and then I don't know if the Spanish Open is a thing, actually. Australian Open, I'm, I'm Federer might agree that it's a thing. And then we have the US Open, where apparently most of my viewers come from. Welcome. Okay, and then the right answer is French Open. Cool. So this is the admin we created so that we add questions to the database, add answers to each question, and select which one is right. The next step will be displaying the questions to the user. As we're displaying questions, we want to use a repeating group, but we only want to display one question at a time. So we do rows one times one and fixed number of cells. And we're gonna search the entire database for all its questions, but we want to show first question number one and then two. And so descending would be 20, then 19, then 18, but we want to first show one, two, three, so it's no. And then you, you may have noticed that we had a list of users who answered a correct question incorrectly and correctly. So we don't want to display all questions, we just want to display the ones which we have not yet answered. This means that both these conditions have to be true because I would have neither answer correctly nor incorrectly to see a qu new question. Okay, and now let's add the questions in here. So I put a text box inside the repeating group and I display the text of the question. Maybe I also want to display the number of the question so we know if it's question one, two, or three. Then here we have a y coordinate of 15. We also make it 15 here so that they're somewhat aligned. And then we want to show the answer possibilities, which will be very much like down here. So we can just copy it over because each question has a list of answers. Hope it fits. Yep. Of course, we don't want this one. Okay, so we show the current cells new questions list of answers in another repeating group embedded inside this one. And then we want a next button to go over to the next question. Okay, and the first thing we want the user to be able to do is to select one of the answers. And what we then want to do when we click the next button is we want to compare the selected answer with the right answer which we kind of told bubble which one is right here. So to make a selection, we're gonna add a workflow to the text element to save the selection to a state. States are used to save information. We're gonna save the information to this repeating group, which we're just gonna call repeating group quiz. And 
it's going to be a state type answer because we're going to select one of the many answers. It's called a new answer in our case. So, and we just want to select the one we click. So if we click the first one, current cells answer will be the first. If we select the third, it will be the third. Okay. And then we might want to alert the user which one they picked. So when current cells new answer is repeating group quizzes answer, maybe we want to be a little more accurate with, so we call this answer selected. Notice as the state is underneath the repeating group, I went to the repeating group, I clicked the I button, and here I am changing the name of the state. Okay, and so whenever the current cell's new answer is repeating group's answer selected, we want to just show the user by, for example, changing the font to like some light blue so that user can just see which one they selected. Okay, this is more like purple. And then now the important one is we just want to kind of add this question to the list of questions the user answered correctly or incorrectly, depending on what they selected. So to do this, we're going to make changes. And you remember underneath data, underneath questions, we have a list of users who answered correctly and incorrectly. So therefore, we are going to change the new question to the answer list of users who answer correctly. We add the current user, but we only do that when the current cell's new question's right answer, which is a type answer, when that right answer is the same as the selection we made, which is the repeating group quizzes answer selected, a state type answer. So if the answer we selected is the same as the new question's answer, then we add that user to the list of users who answered that one particular question right. And of course, also the inverse. So list of users who answered incorrectly, we add the current user to that if the right answer is not the repeating group's quiz answer selected. Okay, then we want to show the next question in the repeating group because remember we only showed one question at a time and we just want to show the second question and of course it's going to skip over to the question we haven't answered yet because we're looking only for questions whose list of users who answered correctly contains and the current user and the incorrectly also con contains we want doesn't contain just to be sure you might have caught that earlier <laughs> i didn't Okay, and that's already pretty good, but you may notice we will click next, but we will not get any feedback as the users which answer was right, which is a shame. So let's build some kind of mechanism. We're going to build two mechanisms just so you better understand the bubble. So one of the options is to kind of show the last question we answered in another group nearby and show the right answer of that question. Last question. Right answer. New questions, right answers, text. So we're showing the last question, the right answer, but what we also want to show is the answer the user made. And you may notice when we click the next button currently, we record if we are right or wrong, but there are maybe three wrong answer possibilities, but we don't know really which one we answered. And therefore we have to save this somewhere. I'm going to use a new data type to save this. We could also use a field. So it's going to be user answer. I'm going to call it new user answer. I'm using new so that it's up alphabetically with the other ones. And each answer, each answer will have the new answer saved to it. And then also the root question saved to it. So that when I answer shark to which animal is a mammal, shark is saved and also 
which as a mammal is also saved and that allows us to identify everything. The reason it allows us to identify everything is every data type, whatever we click, we notice that the creator is always automatically saved. So if we're logged in, we're going to be saved. Okay. And we're going to call it my answer. And actually we have to search the database for this because well we won't find anything <laughs> so let's first go to the next button so we haven't actually we've created the data type but it's not actually used yet so when we click the next button we also want to create that answer so new user answer is created with an answer of the state so whatever we selected and with the root question of the current cell. So the process is we click one of the answer possibilities. It's saved as an answer kind of state. The state is compared against next. And when we click next, then we save that new answer. So we save the user, the root question and that answer. And now what this means is here we can type my answer and we can search the entire database for all new user answers where the root question is this question. So it's going to search for all answers and also created by me. It's going to search for all answers with that one root question and created by me. And it should only get one thing. So we want first item and we want to show the answer is text. And then we want maybe some feedback mechanism, such as an icon. So when it's a right, we want to show a check mark and we want to maybe make that green. Here we already had a green somewhere down here, I think. We want to show a check mark, except in the case when Param Group's new question, right answer is not do a search for all new user answers with this question and this creator. In that case, we want to show a cross icon and maybe we want to make it red to make it evident for the user. Okay, so just to clarify what we did here, currently we were only when we're clicking the next button, we were comparing the answer selected with the answer with the right answer and either then adding the uh, that user to the list of users to answer correctly or incorrectly. But there are always maybe three wrong answers. So when we then see which answer we wrote down in the past, we will not be able to identify which one with just this system of step two and three. And therefore we created a new data type, which specifically records what we answered to each individual question. So it creates a new kind of row in the data type new answer in, the, in that table recording the answer we gave, which is the state, and then also the root question, which is that one. And maybe it's a good idea to just reset the state so we don't accidentally click next twice. So we take the answer selected and make it empty. And then here we want to show the past answer we gave, right? And to do this, what we're going to do is we need to actually populate this group because currently the group has a data source empty. Instead, what we want to do we want to actually show something in the group, which is that question. And we want to do it early on before we switch over to the next question. So when we click next, we display the question we just answered 
over here. We also create a kind of a copy of what answer we gave. We modify that question to, uh, to add our user to the people who've either answered correctly or incorrectly. Then we show the next question in the repeating group and we empty the state. Quite a long process. Okay, let's have a quick look. Okay, we see we're a little confused because we see this data to start off with. So what we want to do is we just want to make it not visible on page load, except when this group's new question is not empty. Then we want to make it visible. Okay, and here we see we start with question one as we ordered all the questions by order number. I can now start clicking around. Well, and here we see my answer is well. And then let's get it wrong on purpose. Spanish open. It's not on right now. And it shows I'm wrong and the right answer is French open. And then I go to the next question. Who's a tennis player? Rafael Adel. Okay. And it works. And now we see no more questions because we've answered all of the questions. And now one more thing we might want to do is kind of a show a history of all questions we answered, or all answers given. So we can take, for example, all answers, which were submitted by us, so created by current user. And then over here, what we want to do is we want to show the root question, which we answered. And then quite similar to up here, the right answer and what we answered. But we'll see it's probably red. And the reason is it's a different data type. Here we had a data type new question and here we have a data type new user answer, which is just the answer we gave. So here we take the current cell new user answer. So we take the root questions text displayed and here we only show it when the answer we gave is not the root question's right answer. So when the answer we gave is not the right answer of the answer we gave, it's root question's right answer. Okay, and here we do the same. My answer is current sales new users answers text. Okay, that will work. And maybe we want to also count how many questions I got right or wrong. The easiest way of doing this is actually doing a search for all questions where list of users who answers correctly contains me, the current user, and counting them. That's all which are right and all which are wrong this list of users who answered incorrectly is me. There's a second way of doing it, which I also want to show you, which is an advanced filter. To do this, we do, we search all new user answers, so all answers I made by doing created by equals current user. And then we filter them and the reason I don't recommend this one is filtering is always done on the client side and this just takes longer than a server side search. We filter them using advanced search filter, which takes even longer. So advanced was the option I selected. And then this new user's answers. We're looking for right questions. So this answer is equal to the root questions, right answer. So we're searching for all user answers by me where the answer that I gave is equal to the right answer of the question that I answered in that case. Okay, and of course the inverse would be true for incorrect answers. So it would be is not. Okay, and let's see if it works. Drum roll. 
here we see we've answered two correctly and one incorrect. Two correctly, one incorrect. So both methods work because we see here it's two right, one wrong. Okay, so just a quick recap. We created three data types, new questions, new answers, and then new user answers recording the question we answered and the answer we gave. And then we just created new questions, adding rows to the database as the admin. So this can be on your own page. And then we had one question selected to which we always added all the answer choices. Just want to show you that it also works with true or false questions, which would be, you know, is Germany a country? Germany is a country, it should be true or false. Is a country. And then we can do true and false. And then we want true is the right answer. And then when we select true and click next, we see last question, Germany is a country, right answer true, my answer true. Because remember, whenever we click next, we display the question we just answered over here. And then here it's also saved and we now have three right answers, one wrong. We pass the quiz. Okay, I hope this video helped you, give you a better overview of questionnaires and bubble logic. And for short tips on bubble, please do check out my site at tiplister.com. I hope you find some helpful tips or maybe post your own ones. Cheers.